Shalom friends. In this video, we're going to expose some black Hebrew Israelite misconceptions and outright lies regarding my recent interactions with some black Hebrew Israelites. While my most recent interaction was polite and cordial, the same people who interviewed me decided to spread some serious disinformation about what I said, and it's time to call them out on their deception. One consistent theme that I bring up in my interactions with black Hebrew Israelites is the idea that rabbinic Jews have been keeping the fasts of Zechariah chapter 8 verse 19 since the destruction of the second temple and how this demonstrates that there will at least be a remnant from the house of Judah who will remember our identity up until the future messianic era, which will be evident when the third temple is built in the future and these former fast days, which were once remembered as days of mourning for the temple, will be celebrated as holidays of joy, specifically for the house of Judah. I articulated this clearly in my interaction with these black Hebrew Israelites, but they decided to try and contextually abuse what I said for their own nefarious deceptive purposes. Let's get into it. Oh. You go to first lie he told. Had up. There's a very interesting part in verse 31. Is it still echoing? No. No, no the echo's going. Scripture again. Um, it says, sorry, I didn't mean I probably should have. So in verse 31, it says something interesting. It says, to confirm these days of Purim, in their times appointed, according to Mordecai the Jew and Esther the Queen, had enjoined them as they had decreed themselves and their seed, the matters of the fastings and their cry. Right? Matters of the fasting and they cry. So it's interesting. What what are these fastings? Right? What what is that referring to biblically? There's actually several different fastings. And I and I meant to say the Day of Atonement was one of my. It was early, but so I couldn't get it out. Uh, um, in verse five, it says, "Say to all the people of the land." Tell us so early. Go, you you go ahead and tell us. So, according to our understanding, these fastings refer to another passage that happened around the same time. Zechariah, he was a prophet that spoke about fasts that the Jews took upon themselves. And if you go to Zechariah chapter seven, Let's go. right? So what happened was it's, I guess the more famous of the fasts would be the, the fast of the fifth. Um, now these fasts are actually mentioned again, if you go to the next chapter and they're mentioned in more of a prophetic sense than a historical sense. Let's see if, now, let's see if it, this is mentioned in a prophetic sense. Let's see. And it says in verse 19. Verse 19. I'm going to read it. It says, Thus saith the Most High of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, and the fast of the fifth, and the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, should be to the house of Judah, joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. Where is this prophecy? How does this prophetic? Can, can, can one of you brothers tell is does this look prophetic to you? Maybe, maybe it's in the Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure this out. I don't, I don't see, I don't see how this is prof prophetic. He is proclaiming that what it would be to them. It said it would be joy and gladness and cheerful and feast. How do, how does this play any part in identifying Israel? It doesn't. But this. And it, yeah, I mean, and it's literally that simple. It it just doesn't. There's there's no there's no way to you know kind of even spin that around to say that this is some prophetic 
speech in Zechariah or in Esther that that now points to these Jewish people and 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 solidifies their claim. And and what one thing that we were hoping, I, I was certainly hoping, was that just allowing him to speak would allow our audience to see what we were doing here. We were literally just allowing him to put his foot in his mouth, and he did it over and over again. You hear that? These people are so delusional that they will deny that Zechariah chapter 8, verse 19 is prophetic. Yet it says that these fasts will turn into festivals of joy in the future for the house of Judah. I would bet my heritage as a Jew that not only do these supposed Hebrew Israelites not know what these fasts are, which was evident in the fact that Banya thought it was talking about Yom Kippur, but he couldn't even remember to say that, but also the fact that they don't celebrate these days, which proves that this has not been fulfilled yet, which proves it's a future prophecy regarding the future messianic era. And if you read the rest of Zechariah chapter 8, you have no choice but to accept the fact that this prophecy has not been fulfilled. So it has to be a future messianic prophecy. Banya and Najid and the other black Hebrew Israelites in this video are actually in disagreement with Ariella Sakari, the man who I debated and had to admit and agree that Zechariah chapter 8 is a future messianic prophecy that has not been fulfilled. All the nations are going to know all right, that we have the true living God. This, this coincides with Jeremiah 16 and 19, where the nations are going to say, surely we have inherited right. lies. Right, right, Isaiah 2, where all nations are flowing unto us. Zechariah, I think that's 8. Where, uh, Zechariah 8, the, that's actually where I want to go. They'll take the skirt of him that is a Jew. Yes, right? yes. Can, can, can we please go to that chapter? Sure, we can go to that I'd chapter. I'd love to go to that chapter. You're reading my mind, man. This is great. I'm reading your mind. I, I doubt that. Yeah, so let's, uh, let, so, okay, so we agree this is a future prophecy, right? This is messianic times? Yeah. Let's move up a little bit to verse... You heard it first here, folks. Ariella Sakari concedes that Zechariah chapter 8 is a future messianic prophecy, while Salt of the Earth Productions won't even admit that it's prophetic at all. You heard it. How do you make any sense of any of that? Clearly, someone's lying. But probably the most egregious and honestly, hilariously sad comment made in this interaction was when Terry Payne put up on the board, don't forget, they are building the temple so they can fast in it. I never said anything of the sort. And when the black Hebrew Israelites in this chat interaction saw it, they didn't correct her because they clearly didn't understand what I had explained clearly in the video. Let's hear what they have to say first before I show you exactly what I said in the first place that clearly went over all of their heads. No, I want to get your I want to get your your opinion on what the sister Terry Payne just said. Don't forget they are building the temple so they can fast and Have, have you brothers any knowledge of that? Well, 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 what's their motivation for it? That's what I'm saying. Like, what's the motivation for them to fast in the temple? Because, you know, even though the, the dude did um, mention these fasts, and I just want to read some real, real briefly, right? He mentions these fasts, but he doesn't say, okay, this is the reason why we're keeping these fasts. He just goes to the scriptures to say the fast of the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the tenth month. He just reads that. He said, okay, so... You're reading in the Bible something that you can adopt religiously. He never gave any pretext. Okay, well, what is the meaning of the fast? Why are you fasting in the third month? Why are you fasting in these particular months? And I just want this Alayasha person clearly listened to my interaction, but is either lying about what I said or he just completely missed what I said because I did explain the meaning why we fast during the days mentioned in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 19. And I'm going to play you the clip from the interview that they did with me and prove it to you right now. 
fastings and their cry, right? So it's interesting. What, what are these fastings, right? What, what is that referring to biblically? There's actually several different fastings uh, biblically. Right. You know, we, we could be talking about the, the feast, uh, um, not the, uh, the feast, but um, I was about to say, um, ah, I can't, I can't get it. It's on the tip of my tongue so early. Go ahead, you, you go ahead and tell us. So according to our understanding, these fastings refer to another passage that happened around the same time. Zechariah, he was a prophet that spoke about fasts that the Jews took upon themselves. And if you go to Zechariah chapter 7, verse 5, I think it's verse 5. Because remember, all of this is happening during the exile. Um, in verse 5, it says, Say to all the people of the land and the priests, saying, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth month, and in the seventh month, even these 70 years, did you fast for me, even for me? So this was something that it's very similar to Purim, that the Jews decided to fast during these months. And what this was for was for the fact that the temple was destroyed, right? So that the idea was that the, the temple was destroyed. So the Jews were mourning for the destruction. So during the time that the Purim story was happening, they were still in mourning for, for you know, they were in exile. So they were mourning for their exile and wanting to go back to the land and, and complete the building of the temple, right? So what happened was, it's I guess the more famous of the fasts would be the, the fast of the fifth. Um, now, these fasts are actually mentioned again, if you go to the next chapter, and they're mentioned in more of a prophetic sense than a historical sense. And it says in verse 19, it says, thus said the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the seventh month, and the fast of the 10th month shall be for the house of Judah for joy and happiness and for happy holidays, but love, truth, and peace. Now, this, this prophecy is specifically mentioning the house of Judah, right? So when I understand what, very similar to what we just discussed with Purim, right? Rabbinic Jews have been keeping the festival of Purim for all those, you know, for, for over 2,000 years, for sure. But then when it comes to the fasts of these months, all of these fasts have to do with the mourning of the destruction of the temple, which is why to this very day, we fast on those days. Because the, the idea is that it says they're going to become happy festivals. Well, if you read the rest of the chapter, it's talking about, I think you would agree and that it's talking about the messianic era you know if you read the subsequent verses it says it shall yet come to pass you know in verse 20 that people from many cities will come and say to another let us go speedily and pray before the lord and seek the lord of hosts i will go to yea many people and strong nations shall come to the lord of hosts in jerusalem and pray to the lord so it says there even people who are not jews will come to pray in jerusalem and it says thus said the lord of hosts in those days it shall come to pass 10 men shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So this, none of this has come to full fulfillment yet, right? But what we do have is a link to the fulfillment of the future, fulfillment of the prophecy, because my people have fasted on these months of the fourth, the fifth, the seventh, and the tenth. Um, and, and this has been, you know, it's something that I do every year. It's something that historically um, we have done as rabbinic Jews for the destruction of the temple because the whole idea of the Messianic age is that the temple will be rebuilt. The Levitical priesthood 
will come back and the Davidic king will rule from the temple that he helped to to build. So that's that's what I would understand this this passage is referring to. And I guess that would be the prophetic link because we're fasting. How how would these fasts become festivals if we weren't keeping the fasts in the first place, I guess is kind of what I'm getting at there is that that's our link to the future messianic era as Jews. Okay. All right. So let me ask you another question. Yeah. Do you, do you believe that um, the curses are signs also of who Israel is, the biblical Israelites? Yeah. Yeah. T- t- so as you can see, I clearly explained what the fasts of Zechariah 8.19 mean to the rabbinic Jews and what they have represented to us for over the past 2,000 years and what we hope them to turn into. Festivals of joy. Clearly, the people who interviewed me were so myopic in their contextual abuse of the curses of Deuteronomy that they couldn't even accurately represent my position when they cowardly tried to critique me after the fact. I'll make it even simpler for anyone who doesn't understand the significance of Zechariah 8.19 and why those who have a track record of keeping the fasts of Zechariah 8.19 are prophetically linked to the Jews of the Hebrew Bible. Let's say you're a self-identifying black Hebrew Israelite And you have no history of keeping these four fasts mentioned in Zechariah 8.19. But you do have a history of having ancestors who were in the transatlantic slave trade. Now let's hypothetically assume that the Messianic era is happening right now. And their black messiah goes up to all the exclusively black-skinned house of Judah and says, From henceforth. The four fasts that the black Jews have taken upon themselves for mourning will now be turned into festivals of joy, just as the Lord of hosts said will happen in Zechariah chapter 8, verse 19. How do you think the supposed black Hebrew Israelites would react to this declaration today? They wouldn't have any clue what their black Messiah is talking about. What fasts? Can any of you one West camps of black Hebrew Israelites show me any of your camp doctrines which encourage your adherents to fast and mourn on these four days mentioned in Zechariah chapter 8 verse 19? Do any of you even know when they even take place? I mean, how could any of you know when they are if your entire identity is based upon you supposedly forgetting everything about your supposed history? I mean, Banya couldn't even remember Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year. So the chances are slim to none. So the obvious question becomes, if your people have no recorded history of fasting and mourning on these days by your own admission, then how can you and your people fit this prophecy concerning the house of Judah's mourning and fasting turning into celebration and joy in the future messianic age? You can't, which is why self-proclaimed black Hebrew Israelites do not fit this prophecy regarding the house of Judah. But on the flip side, when it comes to rabbinic Jews, we have mourned the destruction of the temple throughout the entirety of the current exile and beyond. This is recorded in our history in the Mishnah, the Talmud, and all the way up until the current day. And when the future Messiah comes and the holy temple is built once again, our fasting and our mourning for the destruction of the holy temple on these four days will be transformed into happiness and joy as we will instead celebrate these four days as festivals of joy just as Zechariah chapter 8 verse 19 says we will. May it happen speedily in our days. Shalom Aleichem.